Hello and welcome everyone. Um, I, we're just letting uh, everyone just join at the moment. So if we can just give everyone just like a, a couple of minutes just to join uh, and then we will be starting the presentation very, very shortly. Now, just to make everybody uh, aware, um, this presentation is being recorded um, and if you are having any technical problems as we're going through, please could you put that in the chat function. Now, if you wiggle your mouse towards the bottom of the page, you will see it's got Q&A and chat. So chat is basically for technical problems and then someone will answer you near enough immediately and try and help you and get you to uh, join. If you've got any questions as we go through that are, are not being answered as we're sort of like going through, if you could please just put that into the Q&A. Now, there are a couple of people in the background that will try and answer those uh, as we go through, but at the end of the session, there will be a short uh, Q&A session um, that we will basically try and answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Uh, but for whatever reason, if we haven't answered one of those questions, there is our contact details at the end uh, that I would suggest you take a picture of or screenshot it uh, on your device and then you have got myself, Doug Walters, uh, email address and Richard uh, Butterfield uh, address uh, as well that you could then drop us an email and we will do our best to sort of like help you out. Now everyone has joined which is absolutely awesome and then we will start our presentation now. Thank you very much. Could we have the first slide please Amy? So uh, Brinsbury um, is quite unique uh, in itself it's a, a unique uh, learning environment where we've basically got 550, 540 acres um, to basically play with, which is basically where you are going to learn um, not only but the theory uh, side of agriculture, but also the practical side as well. Uh, we have got approximately uh, 200 uh, clean uh, sheep that you will uh, be lambing um, in March with approximately 400 lambs uh, at foot as well. Um, it is a, a great opportunity there because we've basically got the classrooms that are situated uh, on the farm, uh, which basically, you know, if we're learning about uh, how to how to plough the ground, the, the, the lecturers will go through uh, the theory of it and then we will be straight out to the practical of it as well. We have got 160 to 170 dairy shorthorn slash airshare milking cows. Um, and the students will rear approximately 30 to 40 calves um, in uh, autumn and again in March uh, as well. So it's a very hands on, you are on the farm with what is going on at that given time. Thank you very much. Now, getting to Brinsbury, um, basically, uh, Brinsbury College is in the heart of West Sussex. Uh, we have got great um, travel links uh, from bus and train uh, coming up from Brighton, Portsmouth, um, Chichester. Um, we have also got a, a bus route, uh, designated bus routes that are for the college only, um, that do pickups at Crawley, Chichester and um, Shoreham. Now, if you want any more information about how to get to Brinsbury, there is, if you use the Brinsbury website, there is uh, basically getting to us travelling se section of that, and that will then take you directly to it, and it will um, basically break that all down for you. When you get to Pulbra Station, though, if you're travelling by bus or by um, train, um, you will then actually get a shuttle bus from there up to the college, and that will take you to the main campus, and that they run in the morning and in the uh, evening to get you uh, both home. Thank you very much. Hi there, uh, my name's Richard Butterfield. So um, I'm another one of the lecturers at the college. So uh, agriculture is a, a fantastic um, industry to work in. There is a wide ranging amount of jobs that you can go to. You can work indoors, outdoors, um, working with animals. I have a lot of students who work abroad. The, um, during the lockdown, we were key workers. So we were still out on farms, looking after the animals, looking after the crops. Um, we have nice good job 
um, secure job prospects. So, um, you know, we always need feeding. Um, food will always produce produced in this country one way or another. And so, um, you know, it's a really good industry to work in. Um, you know, we want safe, um, environmentally friendly and um, welfare friendly food in the industry. Uh, next slide, please. So these are just some of the uh, students that have come through the college. So starting on the left, you've got Chloe. So Chloe finished a year ago. Uh, she is now working on uh, a very large sheep farm near Chichester, just probably about two or three miles down the road from where um, she lives and grew up. Um, that job came across from uh, a contact uh, that contacted us, wanted someone local, we introduced them and uh, Chloe's been working ever since. So she works with the sheep, uh, she does tractor driving, she's been haymaking recently, um, it should be help getting the harvest in soon. Uh, the next one uh, you'll see is Sophia. So Sophia is the young lady at the back of the, uh, the flock of sheep there. So Sophia started work experience on a dairy farm just north of Worthing. She was doing one day a week there. Um, they then gave her some part-time work and then when she finished college uh, a year ago, they then offered her some full-time work and she is still working there now. Um, her jobs include uh, looking after the calves, uh, feeding animals, checking, doing any, any duties that need with the livestock. She'll do a little bit of tractor driving, but mainly does the, the livestock. Uh, the next one you've got is Barney. So um, Barney uh, was here many years ago. Um, he, when he finished uh, Brinsbury, he had the uh, good enough grades to go to university. So he went to the Royal Agricultural uh, University in Sirencester. Um, he spent three um, years there studying his degree. And then after his degree, he joined a European farming company called Velcor um, as an assistant farm manager. So um, when I spoke to them last year, uh, Velcor, they said, I said to them, how, how much would you sort of pay um, a young person going into industry? He said, if you came out uh, with a degree, um, they would offer you a job, um, probably paying you £29,000 a year salary. They'd give you a vehicle, probably a four-wheel drive truck and a phone and probably a house uh, to go with your job. So, um, you know, potential there is amazing. Barney is then, I think he did about three or four jobs with the company as an assistant farm manager. Um, he's then did two full-time management jobs. Um, he's now um, off, I think he's got a new job now, just north of London, uh, where he's managing a thousand acres of crops. Um, you then got Rod. So Rod's the last one on the right-hand side. Uh, Rod now works for um, a local agriculture contractor just over for Midhurst. Uh, he lives just north of Chichester. Um, he drives tractors on an agricultural scale, but also an amenity scale. So he'll do things like football pitches, polo pitches um, and things like that. And, and out of all of those four, Rod was probably the only one uh, from a farming background. So, so Rod's father is a farm manager, he lives on a farm, but all of the others uh, did not come from a farming background. And next slide, please. So um, employment opportunities in the industry. So... Um, the agricultural industry has a massive shortage of labour at the moment. So um, I have many um, employers phoning me, especially this time of year, saying, have I got anyone? Uh, generally, I don't because all students have got a job. So all students that finish level three really do go on to employment if they want to work in the industry. But you don't just have to go and work on a farm. So you can see a list there of all of the other different things. You can work in an office as a grain broker. Um, you can be a manager. You know, you can start on a farm or you can go all the way up to, uh, you know, becoming a manager director of a large um, land based company. So it's whatever you want. So I think um, we did some research a few years ago. We found something like 400 different career paths um, that lead from the agricultural industry. Next slide, please. So uh, just to make you aware, these are the three um, levels of course that we actually run uh, at Brinsbury. Uh, we use City and Guilds for all three of them uh, at the moment. Now, also just to make you aware, when me and Richard are talking about these courses, you will say, we sometimes say it can be two and a half, it can be three days uh, a week. It just depends on the grades that you get within your GCSEs. So basically, if you get your 
fours or above or C's or above in maths and English, um, then you won't need to resit them. Mm -hmm. If um, you don't get those, um, those grades, you will then have those incorporated into your qualification at the same time uh, as well. So that's why there may be a little variation, we may say two, two and a half days. So basically, I'm the study programme leader uh, for level one and level two. Uh, the level one course uh, is a very practical course. Um, it gives you, a, it's an entry level course course uh, into agriculture and it gives you a good insight into uh, what uh, you will actually sort of be doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on a farm. Just to give you a, an example, it is about 80% practical with about 20% theory. It is built up of practical assessments, um, a couple of assignments and two small um, multiple choice tests where the level two uh, goes into more depth um, with it's about 60% theory uh, sorry 60% practical uh, with about 40% um, uh, theory now also um, that is a great insight and uh, leads uh, very well onto the level three uh, as well but also you will also be doing your work experience uh, with this level of course as well so you actually get out onto uh, a farm gain extra experience uh, you will be covering a lot of practical things you will be looking at livestock crops machinery estate skills uh, and basically myself and Richard we teach to our strength so I will teach a lot of the uh, livestock um, theory and uh, practical side of things where Richard will uh, teach uh, a lot of the uh, machinery uh, the estate skills and a lot of the crops So uh, we have um, a couple of guest speakers. So we've got the first one is Nicola Robwell. So Nicola finished this year. So Nicola, can I um, pass it over to you? Nicola, you need to unmute yourself. So I think I'm struggling to uh, hear Nicola. Can uh, anyone else hear Nicola? Nicola, did you try talking? No, unfortunately we can't hear you, Nicola. So thank you for joining us, Nicola. Can we go over to Kaylee? So if Kaylee can unmute herself. And so Kaylee uh, finished about four years ago. So um, can you just explain uh, a bit about yourself and uh, why Brinsby is a good place to, to come as a student? Uh, hi, I'm Kaylee, and uh, I left college four years ago after completing the level three diploma as a mature student. Uh, the college was incredibly supportive from day one of applying for the course um, and starting the course, and they were there to help with any questions or concerns I had along the way. Uh, not being from a farming background growing up in Portsmouth, I felt the course would give me that greater understanding of how the industry worked um, and help me make connections. Uh, throughout with, with doing work experience, um, as it's heavily encouraged in all three, all three of the levels, um, and many of the connections uh, that I made through college and now gone on to become uh, good friends and uh, mentors. Throughout my time at college, I actually did four lambing placements and worked part-time at a spring uh, dairy dairy farm where I helped uh, milk in and rearing the young stock there, which were all contacts made through sort of Doug and Rich um, and the other lecturers at college. So that's a really good positive from the farm um, and from Grinsbury College. They do really look after, you, look after you in and outside of college. Um, one of the best things from Grinsbury is having the, the working farm at the college. It really helps you build your confidence in what to expect from a, from a working environment. Um, and the ratio of classroom based and practical lessons helped uh, put practice into theory, which for me was really important, uh, especially when it comes to applying for jobs, because you sort of have a, a greater knowledge. Uh, since leaving college, I've gone on to become a herd manager at an autumn carbon farm. Uh, we have 350 cows, 200 replacement stock, um, and I have my own flock of sheep, so that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, uh, farming is an incredible industry to work in. Which is, all, which is always having to adapt and grow as an industry. Uh, many different opportunities for young farmers, as Richard's already mentioned, uh, from hands-on farming, marketing, log logistics, food companies, supermarket suppliers, farm engineers, the list goes on and on and on. Um, 
It's an industry that is uh, key to supplying food to the country and it's always after new young farmers coming into it. Uh, it also allows you to travel. Uh, a lot of my friends have gone and worked abroad, uh, doing harvests in America and Australia or lamb seasons out in New Zealand. So that's pretty exciting. If you want to go off and travel, you learn a, you learn a good skill in farming um, and that will, will truly take you wherever you want to go, really. Um, and there's lots of courses also put on by uh, industry leaders, HDB and RPDF. They put on lots of uh, sort of different theory courses or travel studies. Uh, so that is really exciting. Uh, once you leave college, you know, the opportunity is still there to continue to learn. Um, I've completed many of these courses. I've done a course through Tesco Future Farming, which was exciting. And I've done the Entrepreneurs and Daring course. Uh, both of which are fantastic and they help you gain sort of knowledge in the industry, help you make better friends, younger friends. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, yeah, being involved in farming at the moment is really exciting. Um, you know, it's always changing. Uh, and these courses from Brinsbury will really put you on a, put you on the right path for a fulfilling career. Um, and that's about it really. So I'll hand you back over to Richard and Doug. Okay, thanks, Kelly. I think we're going to try and go back to Nicola now. Uh, I think she thinks she can. Uh, she's got her audio sorted. So, Nicola. Okay. No, we still can't hear you, Nicola. Unfortunately, Nicky, you just have to give us a little bit of a wave. I think, and uh, I think we're going to go to the next slide. Okay, so um, there's now going to be a, a short video uh, just of uh, what you might um, do on the college farm and, and Doug Walks will just talk you through it. So uh, this is the beautiful uh, Brinsbury estate. Um, you will, but this is where you will actually gain your knowledge uh, to hopefully go out and work in the industry. Uh, we've got a wide variety of machines and operations that we do uh, on the farm. Uh, this is one of two of the actual uh, classrooms uh, that is based uh, at the farm. Uh, we've also got a IT suite um, located at the farm as well. And also what is very unique uh, is we've actually got um, we share, myself and Richard, share the office uh, with the farm staff as well. Um, so it gives us a great insight on what's going on the farm real time. So we never, so the students never miss out. Now this is where you can see a this year's lambs that have been penned up. Now if you look at the lambs, uh, they've got a yellow ear tag uh, in one of their ears uh, and that has actually got a little electronic chip in it. So basically as they sort of come through this system here, it tells us the history of that animal and you will see in a minute on the scales it will state a weight of that animal. If you look closely um, with that, it has got directions. So there's two directions there. One was straight on and one's gone right. So what Richard is uh, doing here, he is basically feeling across um, the animal. He started at the shoulders, he then went to the loin and he's now at the ribs. And what he's basically doing is feeling for the fat coverage on that lamb. Now where we really want it is within that little scale that you can see on the screen now on R3L, so oh, sorry, R4L. Um, and that is basically right in the middle of the green, traffic light system, quite plain and simple. You know, amber, we're gonna lose a little bit of money if we send it, uh, red, it's it's too fat or it's too skinny uh, at the end of the day and it's not ready to go so that's why Richard just let that one go straight forward then uh, and he just stands back lets the animals come in now you can see here the rest of the um, lambs there are out strip grazing our fields and um, basically we're strip grazing because of how dry the summer has been uh, and also it maximizes the grass that they will actually eat here you can see our dairy herd uh, majority laying down uh, chewing the cud as we class it so basically that's where they're making milk for us um, you can see them rolling their jaws in a circular motion uh, within that uh, there is our Sussex sweepable as well um, and then what we will do is you're basically now going to a few sort of stills uh, of the farm as we go through this is of the cows uh, coming into milking um, and then we've got some of the students where they were out showing. Uh, this is one of our students that the uh, cow did extremely well uh, at the south of England uh, and became champion. And then we move on to a little bit of uh, field operations. So a little bit of rolling here um, that is all done by the students. So, you know, the thing is, um, 
the students are involved with everything that we do uh, at Brinsbury and um, obviously it's the idea is you're learning in a safe uh, environment and you know things don't always go right things will break uh, etc and you learn how to sort of like overcome and repair them and uh, how to move on from that now that's the end of the video and then we will just trot back to um, our other screen uh, which is basically hang on we will go back to our next slide thank you very much amy now at uh, brinsbury um we use additional support. Now we work very closely with additional support. We have both in and out class support sessions. Now some students may get extra time in exams, they may need a reader, they may need a scribe. Um, and basically every student that starts with us uh, in September will be exam assessed to see if, uh, so you can then get the greatest opportunity to gain, gain the, the best grade possible. Um, we also, have expert links uh, with our uh, local employers. Uh, we uh, also, with the teaching team being myself and Richard, we work very closely and we work what works for students and we share those experiences as well. We use um, ACER sessions, which are delivered by our student tutor. Now the student tutor is there to uh, deliver uh, pastoral support for our students, but also the ACER sessions will help you. Um, they will do discussions. They will look at um, skills and skills and attitudes that you need to go on um, to um, gain great you know employment or to move on to the next step now we also use our uh, careers team which is called uh, progression plus now both myself and richard uh, will actually have uh, progression plus come to us um, to to our uh, sessions and they will actually look at um, career advice, where to look for um, jobs, how to put a good CV together, what needs to be in a CV um, nowadays, and also how to put a covering letter or a covering email um, together uh, to be able to sort of uh, hopefully gain employment or to even just move on to that next step uh, within your sort of college life. For the next slide, please. So um, just a little bit about enrichment. So um, the college is really, really good for enrichment generally. So any student at the college can do many different things. Um, the college will do, you know, trips to New York, Thorpe Park, Paris, etc. But on our courses, um, we try and do as, um, as, many, as many trips to other farms as possible. So we want to teach you and show you lots of different ways to farm. And then you can decide which is the best way for you. Um, it's also a very good way of um, you guys getting contacts for the industry um, purely because, you know, that, that is how you will get your jobs, not just um, adverts in a paper, um, but, you know, it will, it will come through the, the, the lecturers. Um, we also go on a study tour. So we'll study tour. So this year um, we went up to Shropshire for four days. We went and visited lots of farms. Um, we went to Harper Island University. So, you know, you don't have to work in a farm. You can go to university and we will show you all those progression routes. Um, also, if you really like it, um, you can then go showing cattle at the South England Show and the Surrey Show. So you've got a few pictures there. There On the right hand side, you've got one of our students um, last year showing cows. That's in the show ring. Uh, in the middle, you've got Jack there with his prize winning pig. Um, I think that year... Uh, or might be the year after that pig there won uh, Supreme Champion South of England, uh, the top prize in all the pigs. Um, and then on the left hand side, you've got young Sophia again, um, where we were looking at a nice jersey herd down, um, I think, Southampton Way. Um, so again, we show you as much as possible. Um, and, you know, it's down to you. So lots and lots of trips, uh, lots of doing practical stuff, and hopefully lots of enjoyment. Next slide, please. So um, now if you just want to sort of like take a minute, get a phone, um, screenshot this slide, uh, take a picture of this slide, because obviously this has got the contact details for myself uh, and Richard uh, on it, uh, but also it's got the college uh, website on there as well. Um, but uh, with this as well is um, obviously um, now is the time to uh, apply to uh, come to us in September. Uh, now, basically, the way that myself and Richard are doing our interviews this year is you apply online. Um, 
and then uh, you'll receive a, a telephone um, interview slot uh, that will be given to you uh, and then myself or Richard depending on what course you've applied for will then do a sort of 10 to 15 minute chat with you uh, and an interview over the phone. Now we are due to start college uh, on the 7th of September so that is our induction week that is when it is due to start so Monday the 7th of September but obviously due to Covid at the moment we are having to follow every single of the government gu guidelines as they come through so you know at the moment we are due to start then but we just have to follow what they are stating you know so we just have to uh, work with the government and just follow that but if you want uh, up-to-date information on where we stand with Covid uh, if you use the college website that is uh, kept up to date daily um, so uh, all the students are aware and anyone can access that now have we got any questions and answers Rachel at all that we um, that have come up uh, whilst the meeting has been going on yeah we've had a really good number of questions actually so I'm just going to go through some of the um, highlights if you could maybe help out with some answers um, no what would you say a typical day is like on the farm Oh, well, I'll take that one if you want. So um, the college day starts at 9.30 um, for lessons. So uh, the bus will get you to the top at 9.15 um, and then you'll have to walk down to College Farm. Um, if you drive, you can drive straight there. So 9.30 starts. Um, a typical day might be, um, let's, let's say uh, Tuesday last year would be, I'd have um, a morning full of um, plant and soil sites uh, and crops. And then in the afternoon we'll be out uh, in the yard, practicing tractor driving. Um, then later on in the year we'll be out in the fields doing field work. Um, another one might be, you know, we might be fixing stuff in the machinery. Um, can you give us a day of your livestock day, Doug? Yeah, I mean, normally uh, we do sort of theory in the morning and then practical in the afternoon. Uh, but uh, some of the, the greatest things is because me and uh, Richard are the teaching team. If we've, say, got the vet coming in um, to do something totally sort of like unplanned uh, with uh, um, a certain animal, I can give a great example. Last year, there was a C-section done on a dairy cow last year, um, which uh, the level threes uh, were, were on site at that time. Uh, it was my lesson. It was supposed to be a theory lesson, but I wanted to get the students out to get that real experience and they said they got tons out of it um, you know they'd never seen it before um, potentially some of them are never going to see it again um, so it was a real good eye opener that's great and um, there are a couple of questions about medicine would um, would they be needing to administer any medicine to any of the animals only uh, a lot of the stuff uh, that we uh, give if it's an injection um, sometimes if it's a preventative care yes uh, but it would always be done under the very close supervision of uh, myself uh, or the farm staff as well or Richard um, would be there as well um, we do uh, a lot of um, I would actually do a lot of, um, sort of almost uh, what they class as sort of like role play uh, putting uh, medication on so we've got a lot of uh, the uh, the guns and that that we use to actually apply um, the topical uh, preventative care I will actually sometimes just put a little bit of food coloring a bit of water just so students can actually get used to uh, putting it on an animal and so they can actually see what they've done so there's no harm to the animal there's no harm to them um, but it's just building up that confidence but it's, unlike, it's unlikely that they'll be doing injections, would they, Doug? Only, only, a, only a, uh, a minimal uh, one, just sort of like an under the skin um, one. That would be the, the, the major one that they would be doing. Um, just as, but that would be level three. Uh, you would be um, sort of like expected to be able to, to give uh, um, a preventative. Okay. Richard, probably for you, what happens if you've never driven a tractor before? Does it matter? Uh, not at all. Um, there'll be lots of people turning up in September that haven't driven a tractor. Um, we start you off on small machines. Um, we teach you how they work first and all the safety of it. And, and then slowly, slowly, we will get your confidence up. So we have little tractors to start on and then we can go up to the big ones. When you're in the big ones, you'll have someone like myself sit next to you, making sure you're OK. And then when you're at a standard, you know, we can be out in the field doing it. And it's a lot safer out in the field. You know, there's nothing for you to hit or go wrong so come the springtime not about march april time we'll be out in the fields with a with a roller on in a big grass field um, going up and down um so nice and safe and yeah we we get your confidence up first to make sure you're okay 
Right. And um, we've got a couple of questions about equipment. Is there anything specifically that students would need to bring with them? Uh, the, the major thing that all students need to have is a pair of steel toe cap boots. Now I'd strongly suggest they have a pair of steel toe cap work boots, either lace up or slip on, uh, and a pair of wellies because when it gets muddy at the farm it gets very muddy. Um, and they must have a pair of overalls. Now the only thing that we state is make sure that they fit uh, properly. I would actually have them slightly bigger um, than is needed just because uh, winter time you want to be able to get your jumpers, your coats and that underneath them. Um, but but that is what they need to provide. Thank you. And should we have one more? What about your applications? How competitive is it to get onto one of your courses? And what could students do to make their applications successful? Um, I mean, course wise, um, you know, if the course is too big, we just make two courses. So there is, we have no limit on the number of students that we can have in. Um, basically to make yourself more attractive than applicants um, the best thing is to get good GCSEs um, and a bit of experience so if you've got a bit of experience if you've got a farm down the road um, you need to sort of maybe speak to them and do a bit of work experience when you're at the college um, we'd want you to do work experience as part of the course so you have to do work experience but we would help you with that so I think I've got a list of about 60 farmers just in Sussex alone or in West Sussex alone um, that have had work placements in the past um, and they're happy to take them again. So, um, but you're here to learn, so you can come with zero experience, zero stepping on a farm. We will give you the basics. We will help you get some work experience. We will then, you know, go into more depth of what the industry is about uh, to help you get a job at the end of it. Okay, that's great, thank you. And for all other questions, we've got the information there, haven't we, that you can make contact with if you do want someone to be able to respond. Yeah, our, both uh, myself uh, and Richard's emails uh, are on the screen there and say um, we are, um, you know, we will access them uh, as much as we possibly can and we will answer. But if you could just put uh, in um, your actual sort of question that you were uh, here at our live uh, virtual event, uh, that would be brilliant. Just so we know where, where um, these questions have sort of come from, that would just help us out um, a lot. Right. I'd just like to say uh, thank you very much uh, for all of our attendees that have joined us. Um, just to let you know that this recording will go live over the, uh, sorry, no, this recording will go onto the website over this next given week. Um, now, if you, but you say, if you have got any questions and queries, please uh, drop us an email, drop us a line, um, you know, and please get in uh, contact with us. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, and thank you, Rachel, and everyone else who's been in the background uh, helping and run the presentation as we've gone through and has been answering things within the chat and that. Uh, thank you very much.